time it is it's time for a cup soul where wisdom is dropped truth is shared and there's enough love for a second helping and that second helping is for you yes Welcome, welcome, welcome back to A Cup of Soul. So good to be here again for a second helping, right? Second helping. Yes. Third helping, fourth helping, but we're on (laughs) faith again. So, hey. So I just want to welcome you to A Cup of Soul. Um, We haven't said who we are for a while, and I thought it would be good if we just say, I'm Teresa, and um, I'm Teresa. That's who I am. (laughs) And I am Candace. Hello. We're partners in crime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All righty. And we're glad you're here. And we'd love to get to know you as well. Um, so we're going to jump in. We have been talking about faith and just walking out faith, that we walk by faith, not by sight. And so um, we just really honestly have been digging deep into faith. And I think we're getting more sugar <laughs> this, this time <laughs> around. Um if you didn't know, I'm throwing this out there. We are on podcast Monday through Friday, and we have a list of scriptures that we give out every month, and then we share them Monday through Friday at 5 a.m., and we'd love for you to come join us. Even if you're not up there early, the good thing is, is if you come to Girl Talk page, click on it, you'll find me and Candace there. So come mm-hmm. join us, and we'd love to um, bless you as God blesses us in studying the Word. Um yes. And, um, yeah, yeah, it's been so good in faith. So it has been good. And, and so this week where we are, we, uh, kind of went there last week, uh, in the podcast and this week we're, we're going there we're going to look at, um, faith, faith must be put into action for it to come alive. So this week it is called faith. In action. So we're going to talk about that. We talked about the Hall of Faithers um, last week. We're going to hit on a couple of those to even show you how the action happened in their lives. Um, but before we jump in, uh, Candace always has fun questions. So let's go for it. All right. So the first one is, <clears throat> what is an important skill that you think everybody should master? Whew important skill mm-hmm when you say skill what do you call skill well mine was to change a tire like car stuff how to change a tire check your oil I don't know if that's like a kit but those kind of things I feel like everybody and I say that because I just learned how to do those things I I guess you're right on that I, the first thing that went to my mind is cooking because I feel okay. like everybody needs to know how to make something you know, have an easy breakfast dish, an easy mm-hmm. dinner dish that you can do, and an easy um, a lunch dish. Like, because ha- you want to eat, and you're going to wait for people, you can make it at home. So, there you go. I don't know if Cooking that's... Cooking and basic car care. <laughs> yes. There we go. Tru- truly, are, I think, are, man, life. Yes. I need to teach those in school. <laughs> yes. Um, thank you. Question number two. Did you have the comfort item as a child? Um, I think I've always had a thing for blankets. Okay. So I'm going to say blankets. And I do still have my blanket from my great, great grandmother, great, great Mm -hmm. grandmother, because it was on her bed. And I'd always say I liked it. So my mom's mom gave it to me is it's a quilt that was handmade, but it is tired and it stays in a plastic, I have a Ziploc type thing that it stays in. But um, I've always had a thing for blankets. Oh, that's cute, that's so nice. Yes, I'm definitely blankets too, but I had a glowworm that Aww. I had it until it no longer 
was a glow worm. It was just a worm. Um, <laughs> so I remember my mom said she had to replace it once because I lost it and it was just devastation. Aww. But there was something about me and my little glow worm. That was my, and every picture from like two through four and a half, five, uh, there's the glow worm in the Aww. picture. <laughs> and then the last question, this actually was asked of me yesterday and I thought it was such a cool question that I want to ask everyone else. What blessed you from church this past week? What was said to you, whether you watched it, you were in person, just give me a nugget that blessed you from church or from a sermon this, on Sunday? Um. Well, my, mm, he, uh, we preached about firm foundation. And so he talked about abiding with the Lord and it's not just going around, you know, like going through life, getting busy, busy and go, okay, God, I need you. And then going, no abiding is, and he gave this example, he used another guy was allowing the guy to wrap his arms around him. And our pastor wrapped his arms around the guy and the guy represented Jesus. But it gave such a great analogy because he kept walking around the guy, tapping his hand, walking around him. Yep. Tap you know, getting something from him, tap and go through life. And he was like, no, that's not being with the Lord. Being with the Lord is allowing the Lord to just, you embrace the Lord and he embraces you. And it was such a great analogy of a relationship with the Lord. Mm, amen. That's good. And it was, it was a good visual. Mm -hmm. really yeah. Um, during worship, uh, one of our pastors jumped up on the stage in the middle of worship, and um, which was amazing yesterday, uh, Sunday. And he said, um, before we can physically bow to God, and maybe when if we are having a hard time bowing, is because we need to stop and think, have we made that heart posture of bowing first? Ooh. So if you are having a hard time physically getting on your knees, getting on your face, it's a heart issue. So check your heart to see, have you surrendered and bowed to to the Lord God in, in your heart? And I was like, whoa. Oh, that went so good with that. Yeah, it just. Wow, that was good. The room went quiet. We didn't even know what to do. It was, it was, and it's been on my mind since he said it. Yeah, I don't even, yeah. I don't even know what to say on that one. That's good. That was good. So it definitely was blessed it was blessed it was it blessed me tremendously mm -hmm. okay those are our three questions all right well i just always have to add on to candace's questions and i want to <laughs> i like catching her off guard she it does and i'm glad she admitted it she likes to catch me off guard y'all this is why jesus didn't give me natural sisters because he knew Teresa was coming yes mm -hmm. so um candace Yes. This question was asked to me, and I think it was asked before I got in there. Because I have this issue before I get to church. I talk to everybody, and by the time <laughs> I get in there, worship has already started. And there's an older gentleman who's really been in my life for about, I'm going to say, 19 years. He is always there. We start at hospitality. So I had to talk to him first, and that takes a long time. But I'm not sure. <laughs> but my sister friend Elsa asked me a question. I think it was asked at church, but... Oh, I can't ask you this question. But the question was this. Do you like ketchup, hot or cold? But I just dawned on me. You don't even eat ketchup. I don't even eat ketchup. Ketchup is gross. So I answered the question. Yay. No, she didn't. Now y'all know. <laughs> she doesn't like ketchup. But I'd love to hear from you. Do you like your ketchup, hot or cold? And I told her, I love ketchup. Like, which one we put it on? Under what circumstances would it be hot? When you go to restaurants, it's always on the table. Oh, you mean like room temperature, not like actually warm. I mean yes. like you put it in like a mic. I'm like, why would you heat no, up ketchup? On the table. That's, you know. Gotcha. Okay, that is warm. Versus refrigerator. I told her it didn't matter to me. Just get, I like ketchup. Girl, we got to get you on a ketchup kick. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Well, at least we agree on this. We both love peanut butter. We both yes, love peanut butter. Yes, Lord. I'm so glad I don't have a child with peanut allergies because that would be so sad. That would be really sad. So that was my question was, do you like okay. ketchup? And I, in the middle of that, I don't, like, I can't ask this girl. 
She's strange I sometimes. Like, she don't I don't like, like mashed potatoes. I don't like ketchup. We're learning things about each other. It's okay. Jesus loves me. And I love mashed potatoes. Oh, God. You like I mean, ma- a potato soup, right? Like baked potato soup? Yes. They are very different things. Don't even, don't even. It's just more milk. Mil- oh, yeah. It's just more <laughs> milk in it. I, mm-mm, yeah. Mm-mm. It's different. Because potato soup has hunks of potatoes in it. That's the only difference. It's not mashed up, girlfriend. Exactly. I don't want my food so smooth. It's weird. Uh, yes. Yo. Help okay. me, girl. Out. Yo, yes. Y'all see what Pray I have to deal y'all. with. Yeah, see what I have to deal with. All right. <laughs> did you get a mug? It's time. No, just kidding. It's, uh, I did not. And this time, okay, y'all, I need help. I went to Hobby Lobby with my mom, and I went to all the mug sections. And you split? Yeah. Split. It was split. I don't, the phrases were weird. Mm-hmm. So many cats. I just, I was not. <laughs> so where yes. do I need to go? Because no. Etsy. So no, I did Etsy. not get a mug this week. Etsy. Etsy. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll report back next week because it has been slim. Yeah. Well, I did go because I was on a mission to find something else. Um, mm-hmm. uh, TJ Maxx had empowered women empower women uh jug whatever with the straw and oh, so yeah. i was on a mission to find it and see what they're in santee but it wasn't but i saw this mug that was just blue okay um yes blue is the color blue is the ministry color so when i see a blue mug it's on and popping it just mm-hmm. ah! and it's plain no words it's just blue it was actually in my post today just the blue mug oh and, okay i saw that <laughs> yes and so then I saw another one that says, you're brave, you're beautiful, you're something. And I just had to get it. It's pink, a really light pink. And that just come to, happened to come home. They both were on sale on the clearance. So, hey, you know. There you go. Some mugs came home. So there you have it. But I'm going to go on Etsy because I want a mug with my word of the year is what I really want. Mm-hmm. But I have not put, I'm going to put some effort behind it this week, y'all. Oh, you just have somebody make it that's on Etsy too. Just a thought. Mm. I like it. Okay. I'm going to yeah, work on it. You know, minute. I haven't found one with my word yet, but that would yeah. be it. So, yes. Okay. Yes. What is your word? Release. Okay. You still releasing? Oh, buddy. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All righty. So, you ready to jump in? Yes. All right. So, I'm going to pray us in and we shall begin. Whew. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for revelation first of all revelation in your word and and to me that just shows how good you are the that just makes me see your characteristics your attributes and and even just faith lord that you are good that you are sovereign you are a rock you are a deposit you are you are god almighty and my comforter my redeemer my restorer my renewer and lord i i thank you for everything that you are in our lives lord and and what you're doing what you're even doing in this podcast that we get to walk out together lord i thank you so much and and i thank you lord where you're calling each one of us um that requires to trust you more lord i thank you for that um as we walk by faith and not by sight it is nothing but you lord so if anybody out there is weary, Lord, I just pray for strength that they know that you are there with them. And I pray in their weariness that even this podcast speak to them, Lord, speak to them in a mighty way, that action be a part of their lives, that it causes them to step out in action and whatever you've called them to. Um, so I thank you. And I just ask you to bless this podcast, every ear that hears and Holy Spirit, you are welcome to have a seat at our table. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So we're back at it. Um, Last week we did talk about um, the Hall of Faithers, which um, if you heard in the Hall of Faithers, it was kind of like, oh, we got to talk about faith in action next week. And um, and in the Hall of Faithers, You just saw action like faith must be followed with action um it we have to move you know 
Faith is a noun. If you think about it, faith is a noun. And believe in the verb form of the same word. Literally, like if you look it up in the Greek, and I can't say it in the Greek and I won't even try. Faith is a verb, okay? Faith is the ability to believe. But the ability must be used and act upon for faith to come alive and work. I think I need to say that again. Faith mm -hmm. is the ability. Faith is the ability to believe. But the ability must be used and act upon for faith to come alive and work. Believing is an action, sign of faith. Believing in the action in faith, that faith will make me move, that I am not stagnant, that I am moving. Just having faith is not enough. Because what does that mm -hmm. look like? Because that means I, I got faith, but you got to lean on the Lord and he's going to make you move. Have an ability because if you don't move, you're still saying you've still decided what that is. Yes, mm -hmm. you are still let's say holding on to it, mm -hmm. whatever the situation may be. Without movement, it's still you. Mm -hmm. Well, you think about it. I'm gonna hit a scripture for you. Uh, James two twenty six. Faith without deed is dead. Mm -hmm. And then. James 2 14 and it's pretty much James 2 14 through 26 but 14 says if anyone claims to have faith but have no deeds it does him no good faith is the root good works good works are fruit so we must see to it that we have both God doesn't need our good deeds but our faith is proven by our actions because we will, and we'll talk about it. We get caught up in doing versus coming to the Lord. So so I think we need to dive into that part. But also, I think about, um, when I think about dead, I think about when it says in verse um, 17 of James 2, in the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accom accompanied, by action is dead dead in that verse above means dormant unproductive incooperative actions are being actions mean that we are bringing faith to our lives and this makes us have the faith that come alive and to be productive mm -hmm. And I think the best way to do that is go to the Word. And we're going to talk about some more Hall of Faithers that wasn't in the other one, but we have some more, okay? Mm -hmm. um, anything you want to say before I jump into those, some more Hall of Faithers? I mean, I was just thinking about the how you were saying, you know, dead is dormant. And it's just without life. Mm -hmm. You know, if you sit there and say, I have faith, but doing nothing what is that saying that's just like i feel like that's just a blanket statement yeah this is a blanket statement and we can do that because it's comfortable it's really easy to say i have faith sure i've got faith in this i've got faith in that but when you put a little pressure to that or when you put god's nudging to that then what does it look like yeah you know and i think we can rob ourselves of victory we can rob ourselves of revelation rob ourselves of either so we can rob ourselves of everything that he has to offer to us by not moving yeah yeah so good and i think you know, I'm, we move from the faith is but faith is essential for salvation yeah it's what saves us and what god gives us in order to be able to see him more clearly think about that it saves us and it gives us gives us in the order to be able to see him clearly because he even says this 17 again so also by itself it if it does not have work it is dead okay and then james 13 35 says by this everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another it's still doing where mm -hmm. it is part of us faith causes you to change mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And really? that's so important of how I love the point of it's connected to our salvation. Mm-hmm. I've even had I've had coworkers be like, "Well, how do you believe in that?" I'm like, "If I believe that he walked out of a grave three days later, then everything else? Are you serious? Like right. my entire." salvation is based on the faith that i have in him Mm -hmm. so of course i'm gonna believe he's gonna show up in this situation and it's like well how do you know because he showed up then yeah so if he showed up then he's gonna show up now but what is it gonna look like i'm like that's not my business (laughs) that's not my job that's his job and to really be able to explain to someone that my salvation is based on the faith i have chosen Mm -hmm. to believe in him but you don't question a chair (laughs) you sure don't you just sit down in it. Mm-hmm. Your car when you get in it, the airplane when it takes off. Yeah, like you really have to think about. It. You're not questioning. Well, how you know it's going home? Well, how you know? No, you don't. And it's important for us to realize that our work, what what we do, does not save us. Right. That all. Oh, <clears throat> pause for effect on that one. You could be the nicest person in the world and be unsaved and go to hell. You can. Mm. There are plenty of nice, kind, wonderful people out there that are not saved. Yeah. And they do great things and they're great people, but they're not saved. Right. Okay, you know, we did a study on James. And Jesus told us in James that the world would know him by the way that we love each other, the way that we walk, the way that we carry our faith out, our way of being obedient. And that was a big responsibility that we represent God to all people in this world. We're not, why are we checking God? You don't check the chair and go, everybody, this is a chair over here. Why are you (laughs) checking the Lord? What does it mean in your everyday life? If you have to check them, it means there's there's a part of you that hasn't trusted. There's a part of you that doesn't believe. And you, I mean, there's it could be fear. It could be, oh gosh, we are complex beings. There, there's so many things that could be, but there is the the connectivity of the relationship is not there. Mm-hmm. If you feel that you have to check it. So, Candace, you know, um, yes, it's that time. Put you on the spot time. (laughs) But how has your faith in Jesus been showing itself lately? Oh, dear. Um, Man, that is an on the spot question. I would have to say probably since losing my dad, that whole, that whole later part of last year and then and then his passing like i it was almost like everything that i said i believed in presented itself to me Mm -hmm. presented itself to me and there was a choice that had to be made you know what i mean there was a choice that had to be made because here it is i can either do what i say i believe or i could make it about me Mm -hmm. and it was those were some some hard moments because we are human and we don't understand his ways and we don't see his things. And then you, you factor in loss and grief. And it was like, wow, Lord, I need you. Yeah. But I knew, I don't know how I knew. I don't even know what mind I knew it in. Calling on him was the only way. Right. And I felt that I felt the peace I had read about. I felt his, his presence show up when I needed it. Like, and you couldn't tell me any different. You can't. Mm -hmm. And those moments will never go away. So to be able to, and then, you know, you throw in family dynamics and whatnot. And just to be able to have even nurses be like, you have this, this way about you. And I'm like, oh, girl, that's Jesus. (laughs) You know, and open up conversations with nurses and his doctor. And just to see it, it's like, this is why we believe. Yeah. This is why, because who else could could bring people together that weren't talking? Who else could make a doctor do it? You just little things where you're like, ooh, I know that was God. Mm-hmm. So good. So, yeah. So now in those moments, I can. It's a it's a sad stone of remembrance in the sense of just I miss my father, but it's a beautiful stone of remembrance because it's like, ooh, Jesus, ooh, he Jesus. did that. Yeah. 
I think you, did that. I think you answered my second question. And what are some real ways that you can begin to show people that you have faith in um, in God? But that's two questions. So the first one was, and we want to hear from you, ladies, to really mm-hmm. think about it. Honestly, how has your faith in Jesus begun to show itself lately? And then the other question is, what are some real ways that you can begin to show people what you have faith in, like that you have faith in the Lord? And as I think about that question, Candace can go back with me on this a little bit. And I wrote it in my gratitude journal when I was thinking about the things that the Lord has done for me and being thankful. Um, Candace, do you remember I was praying for clients at one time because I didn't have any clients? Yes. And um, just... We wrote it in a circle. Yes, we did. We wrote it in a circle. (laughs) I'm not sure how long ago it was, and I know Candace had wrote in a note and put it in her Bible. She said, Mm -hmm. Candace has a cute way. We have to one day talk about her, her means of covering people in prayer and how she does it. But um, there was a time that was my request, and on Friday I was counting up how many... um, referrals and calls that I gotten for counseling and last week and I have a full load my load is 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 full when I tell you it is full and um, so I was counting up all my messages that I had written down in my my book of my what is it my to-do list I had 19 people reach out for counseling last week and I was like Jesus but do you remember the specifics of the prayer it was 10 you, I remember this. You said if I could just have ten mm. clients, I would be good. I remember this. I'm gonna have to pull it out and take a picture. I remember it was. I just, I remember asking you, what does that look like? And you were like, just ten. If I could have ten, mm. I'd be good. Girl, come on. Now. Nineteen calls in a week. Yeah. What? what? Amen. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And I did, I wrote it down on Saturday when I was sitting with my gratitude journal. I was like, wow, like, thank you, Lord. Like, mm-hmm. and having to walk it out, scared, um, could have ran, um, Lord, let me go find, cause I'm good about, it. let me go find something else. This ain't working, this ain't working, you know? <laughs> but I, I had to be patient and wait and trust God and he's come above and exceedingly and abundantly than I ever, could fathom in my life, honestly. Yeah. Amen. So nothing good. what I thought. Nothing what I thought because my load is so full. Them people, I have no room for them people. Mm. So yeah, God is good. God is good. And that what a cool demonstration of faith, as far as faith is action. Here you were praying for some. For, first, there was a need, so you're believing in God to fulfill this need. Mm-hmm. So part of the action was acknowledging there's a need, and then you're praying for the need. And then you bring in me to pray for the need. And then we wrote it in a circle. Like, mm-hmm. that's all faith. And again, right. not knowing how it was going to look, but believing if I have this need, <clears throat> he's fulfilled my needs before. There's no reason he's going to stop now. Right. So I'm going to move in that need. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to pray. And I'm going to worship. And I'm going to bring in sister friends. I'm going to do these things. And then, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, you just hit it. That's, that is such a... That is faith in action. Yeah. Literally. Because like if you hadn't done in this particular, you know, this one particular incident, it's just like, oh, I need clients. And if that would have been the end, okay, over. Yeah. Well, yeah. How's that going for you? What are yeah. you doing about it? Yeah. And I just think, you know, that's like, like a muscle. Faith grows the more you put it into action. Yes. And... You know, whatever's next, I believe. I believe, because I saw him do it. I saw him in a small prayer. I thought, I wasn't asking, like, oh, shoot, I ain't asking for a lot. Let me just start with 10. 10 will be great, you know. And exceedingly, abundantly, way over 10. And, like, literally, in this way, as, as believers, it strengthens our trust in God and his promises. Even when they don't, um, you know, I think also of my dad believing because, you know, he believed that my mom would get saved. He believed that my mom was going to go to church um, with him 
and how he turned that around. And as long as it took, as long as it took, um, he still believed. And it, and, it, and his faith stre- strengthened our faith to believe as his kids and as believers to strengthen our trust in God and his promises even when they don't live long enough to see the fulfillment of it in their lifetime. So I say that for my brother. I'm going to take my dad's faith and my mom's faith that my brother's life will be turned around to follow Christ. I'm going to take that because it wasn't fulfilled in their time. But I'm believing it. I'm believing it. And that shows why it's so important to have our faith in him and not in anything else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even with, like I wish I've shared before about my father, we had a very rocky relationship and I knew uh, what I wanted. My heart's desire was for us to be reconciled and to be friends. It was mm-hmm. funny. I remember praying, I just want to be friends. Like I want to be at, at this adult relationship with my father. And it happened. Now granted, who knew it was going to happen the way it did, right. but my faith was in God knowing however it was going to happen, I was going to be okay with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think this is another question you really have to ask yourself. Are you acting on the faith in God and his word? God says he will fulfill. God says that he will promise. When you see a command or warning in scripture, do you obey it? And that's important because, again, it's not about our works. It is about obeying the commands and the warnings that's in scripture. And if you don't know the scripture... And sister friends, I'll never leave that. You got to know the word. And if you don't know a scripture, you can't walk out the faith that God is calling you to walk out because we do it on our own. I told you, I would have said, oh, let me figure out another way to do this. But you have to walk out the God promised. I'll fulfill it. You got to be obedient to his word and what he said. Just like even when Candace was with her father and, and that whole thing, there were different times, you know, and, and, you know, going back to count different times that she had to walk out obedience, Mm -hmm. obedience to Christ, not obedience to who her natural father was, but it was about obedience to what God had called her to do in the season and and the commands that he's given her, even though it may have been afraid, even though you got to talk to yourself and it has to be this. Are you letting biblical truth about God's character and power shape your thinking and response? Because we did. Candace and I would have that dialogue. You know, like, okay, with that, you know. But again, allowing the biblical truth that Candace did about God and his power to shape her thinking and response. How do I respond? It was a tough time with family members and not, you know, it was, it was quick happening to not receive the news. No, I don't want that. That's not what I want. But even helping those members of the family, like, and, and having that time in her closet with the Lord and praying and allowing God's power to shape her thinking. And, and that, I mean, yes, yes. Because without knowing the word, even if something as basic as what he called us who he calls us like there were plenty of times that i just had to remember that who does god say i am right because everything else around me is is who who does god say i am Mm -hmm. and hold on to that it's a vice grip like he has called me victorious Mm -hmm. he has called me and just almost chanting it to myself over and over with my fist clenched going this is who he says i am this is who he says I am. I can do this. I can mm-hmm. do this. Because this who? Yeah. When you don't know anything else, I know what the word says. Yeah. And, you and, know, I think about it. The more confident, if you really think about it, Candace, the more confident that we are in the promises and God's word, the more it inspires us to obey him. Oh, Yes. And that's what it was almost like. If God, I saw you do that. I, I'm confident in your word. I'm confident in your promises. I see your commands. And I'm not moving to the right or left. Like Peter, I'm stepping out on the water and I'm trusting you. Yeah. And I can trust you. I can trust you. Literally. Be excited about the action. I think that's something too. Yes, obedience. We talk about how hard obedience is. And it is. I'm not discounting that. 
But there's also another perspective of it where how amazing is it that we serve a God who calls us to be obedient to him? Like he wants that for us as much as we, you know what I mean? There's, it's a relationship, like you were saying earlier, it's a relationship. So he's not really asking us to do anything that's going to hurt us, harm us, destroy us, nothing. So it's hard for us, but not for him. Right. So to be excited that I have the opportunity to be obedient to what God has asked me to do, because he knows how this is going to turn out. Mm -hmm. He knows the revelation. He knows the transformer. We love to talk about being refined by the fire. Well, fire is hot. It's hot. (laughs) Remember that. It is hot. It is is used to get rid of the impurities. It is used to to really make things the way they were intended to be. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. If we stop like, oh, so that hardness we may feel, switch that narrative and be like, you know what? he's calling me to do is for my good Mm -hmm. well and he's calling he's that that faith that comes alive in us is calling us to be productive so you know we shared we shared about us but i want to take you back to the word because that that's your tangible and and stories that you can read so let's take a minute to really look at um some place our people in the bible that their faith came alive and made them productive. Okay, so let's uh, use that to for our next talking point. So, so here, let's really look at it, like being productive. So first, we'll take the man, um, the paralyzed man. Christ gave this command, and it said this, Luke. For Luke 5, 24, and it says, So that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. He said to the um, paralyzed man, I say to you, get up, pick up your stretcher, and go home. Mm. What's your thoughts? I mean, I think that this is a perfect example of how we're talking about faith with no action versus faith with action. Because mm-hmm. this man had sat by the pool for 38 years, if I'm not mistaken. No, is he the same one with infirmities? Pick up your mat and walk? Take up your mat and walk? Yeah, because we have the man with infirmities who had a condition and he asked, do you want to get well? Yes. Yes. So it's two different men. Okay. All right. I think I got my my men confused. Okay. So we'll skip down. We'll go there. We'll go to the man with infirmities. And he says this, John 5, 6. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had already been there a long time in that condition. And he said to him, do you wish to get well? Mm-hmm. Will you mm-hmm. be made whole? Literally. Will you be made whole? Like, all right, you can go for it. Well, just that, that is, I think, an example of faith with no action because that particular man, I think it was like 38 years that he sat by the pool, Mm -hmm. right? Yes, 38 years. So he, he had an, uh, I want to say like an awareness, he knew what the pool could do for him, right? He Mm -hmm. was very aware of the benefits of getting to the pool. He had all these reasons as to why he couldn't get there. So his, it's almost like his faith took him to a point and then stopped because mm-hmm. he never moved. He had faith in what the pool could do. He saw it do it for, he saw it happen to other people year after year after year. <clears throat> he watched it. So his faith was, but it's like it was stagnant. It was stagnant. He wasn't moving. Right. And it wasn't until his faith shifted and we see it in the conversation he has with Jesus himself, but it wasn't until his faith shifted and got put into him that he was able to act on it and actually be healed. And of course, in true Jesus fashion, he no longer even needed the pool to be made well. Jesus did it for him instantly right there. Right. So do you want to be whole? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Literally. But 38 years, that's a long time. 
And what would we do for 38 years? Oh, God, I think we would do just what he did. Come up with every reason as to why not. A whole lot of excuses. Because we're, mm -hmm. I, like, when I, like, have this thing, like, it's, we have so many excuses. Mm-hmm. Like, so many. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll make excuses for why we can't read the word. Why we can't give God an hour of our time. Because I have to do this, I have to do that, and I have to do that. Do you? You don't have an hour for God? I don't know. That's tough. Yeah, when you put it like that, that's like way tough. That's way tough to, to be able to say, I don't have 60 minutes out of, I think we did the math one day, it's like 24,000 minutes or something like that in a day. You don't have 60 to set aside specifically for God, but yet we will want to reap the blessings of a faith that's put into him. And just the cry of a prayer, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when you say that, that just sounds so harsh. And we wouldn't even want to be used in such a way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because if you came to me like that, I wouldn't want you to use me. And we'll, we would call it, like, why are you using me? Mm -hmm. You're using me. You only come to me for one thing. Right. All right, let's talk about the man. Um, do you want to be healed? And that is, he's, um, I'll read it, John 5, 5, 2 through 6. And um, he was at the, the gate. You are, right, the sheep gate of the pool. In Bethesda, when five roofers came, blind, lame, and paralyzed, one man was there who had been invalid for 38 years. Are they the same men? I think it's different accounts, right? Because it's in the Gospels. So I believe yeah. that each one of them has an account of the man. It's just, okay. you know how Luke is. He always got to put a different mm -hmm. spin on it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I guess, you know, how do you respond to that? How do you respond to the Lord's question to you today? Do you want to be healed? Mm -hmm. And think of it like this. Healing of the Lord begins by Jesus seeing us in our time of need and moving forward for us in love. It's in yes. love. It's in love. My next person, which we've talked about before, I think we have, we've talked about so many people um is the woman with the issue of blood and who touched me someone has touched me for i perceive <clears throat> um they've gone out of me literally something literally have gone out of him for that person and that's her luke 8 45 and 46 and it says um and jesus said who is who is the one who touched me? And while they were all denying it, Peter said, Master, the people in the crowd pressing in on you. And But Jesus said, Some, Someone did touch me, for I was aware that the power had gone out of me. Can you only imagine? Like, that's, that's bananas. And to think, she had been, her faith withstood her those 12 years mm -hmm. like that's a whole different type of level like the faith of just in my mind this is a candidacism i'm not like this doesn't define me type right. of faith you know what i mean like she was going through the issue of blood she was cast off but it was like no <laughs> this is not the end of my story Right. I believe in more there is more for me so when she caught wind that jesus was in town she was like, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. I'm going. And, yeah, I'm going. I don't I don't even know what it looks like, where he's going to be. She heard from somebody who heard from somebody who heard from somebody that he was coming. And she took off. She was going to get in his presence. Like, oh, man, 12 years of just nothing. Nothing. I, yeah. Like, what do you say? Right. Someone touched me and I felt another translation. This is the ma this is the message. But to knowing that you touched him, I felt power discharged from me. When the woman realized that she couldn't remain hidden, she kneeled down trembling before him. We're just like, thank you, God. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you later. Thank you. You answered that. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Mm 
Right. You know, she kneeled down before him in front of all the people and she blurted out her story. Why she touched him and how that the same moment she was healed, Jesus said, daughter, you took a risk trusting me and now you are healed and hold. Live well, live blessed. What did you say that the pastor said about bowing? Because this would be the great place right here. Oh, yes. He um, he said that, you know, we physically are to, to bow to God. We are to surrender ourselves. And there's a physical posture on your knees, prostrate, all of those things. But if you find yourself not being able to do that, or it feels uncomfortable, or you just don't do it at all, check your heart. Because you have to be able to surrender and bow to him in your heart before you could ever physically do it. Yeah. Psalms 138, 2 says, I will bow down to watch the holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your un and your faithfulness. Ah. Yeah. And I think with the Hall of Faithers and even the two that we added right now, you see like this, you see the faith move. So yes, you can you can pinpoint the action of what they did, but in their stories, you can see how their faith has moved and changed. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the noun and mm -hmm. the verb that we were talking about at the beginning, mm -hmm. how it does take on life and movement and has breath. Because in each of those, just these those two stories right now, the faith at the beginning was not the same at the end. Yeah. And I just, I want to stop here, I think, to remind someone who might be listening. And maybe you need to share this with someone who's walking through um, something in their life. To just remember that you are loved by God and never yeah. alone. And be grateful for his unfailing love for you. We are sometimes so ungrateful. And, and God does so much, even when we don't even realize what he's doing, you know. You, it, it'll be another day. Know that prayer might haven't been answered, but it's another day. Another day of opportunities to say, for this is the Lord is made. I will rejoice in this day. Thank you, Lord. I'm not alone. I am loved. And I see another day for God's work to be done, to be in his presence, to experience him. And you really have to think about it and ask yourself, you know, uh, whose love do you need to invite into your life? And then show thanks to them for loving you unconditionally. Lord, I want your love in my life. It is unfailing love. I want it. And I want to thank you for that because it's unconditional. Because there's, he's not, he doesn't ask, you give, give, work, work. He just says, here it is. Yeah, we need to bow more. We truly need to bow more. Absolutely. A whole lot more than we've ever bowed before. Mm -hmm. Amen um, to that. Let's hit another one. What about to the, the man born blind in John 9, 7? And he said to him, go in the pool of Samola, Silola, S-I-L-O-A-M. See, see, I think it's Siloan. Siloan. Mm, I'm bad at this. Siloan, me too. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you a word up. <laughs> um, so he went away, washed, and came back seeing. Like, a blind man. He told him to go. Go wash in the pool. He told him to move, and he moved, and he went, and he came back, and he wasn't blind anymore. Well, the action of telling a blind man to go somewhere, like you have to have faith in like literally a blind person to go over there to do something. Mm -hmm. There's a, you have to have a trust in the person who's talking to you to follow that command. Yeah. But check this out. This was an unsolicited blessing in mm -hmm. this story because um, you know, sometimes God blesses out of the blue and we don't, we are not even postured for it. We don't even see it coming. But when we encounter his goodness, we're overwhelmed by gratitude. But literally here was this feeble man, a man of sorrow. 
And God worked in his life like never before. He just told him to go. Yeah. Uh, Psalms 21, 6 says, Surely you have granted him unending blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. Like, just his presence? Unending blessings. His unsolicited blessings deserve our recognition and rejoicing. Like that's a whole, that's a whole mood right there. Mm -hmm. His unsolicited blessings. Mm -hmm. Only God can even do that. Mm -hmm. So here's a man not even asking, had accepted where he was, right? Mm -hmm. Accepted where he was in life. And was probably like this is this is where this is where I am, you know, this is what what my life is gonna be, and yeah. was there and was still doing the work, and Jesus comes up to him. Yeah. So this one hit home for me, mm -hmm. and I think it always has because I think a lot of the times we will say, well, when I get X, Y, and Z taken care of, mm -hmm. then God can use me. When I did, 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 then I can go and be obedient. Yeah. And that's where you miss the unsolicited blessings. Like he's yeah. still good while you're walking out an illness. He's mm -hmm. still good while you're fixing your, while your marriage is, is under control. You know, he's still good while your child may not be at home. Like he is still good. And in his goodness of still, that is where we get to encounter those unsolicited blessings. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. So good. Um, one more. <sighs> Them leopards. The ten leopards. Oh, the leopards. Yeah, you know, he says, this is Luke seventeen fourteen. When he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priests. And as they were going, he cleansed them. And I guess for me, that shocker is, is they didn't say thank you. Say that one more time, nice and slow. They didn't say thank you. Yeah. You know, humility is quick to thank God and the others for lavishing blessings. Like, like stopping to go, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. To to humbly, quickly thank God. But they, these, they, to me, they were hillbillies, literally. Right. <laughs> right. Like, okay, I'll share. This is in a the voice translation. I really like the voice, the voice translation. But it goes like this: Go now and present yourself to the priest for inspection of your disease. And they went, and before they could reach the priest, their skin disease was healed, leaving no trace of the disease that scarred them and separated them from the community. One of them, the instance he realized that he had been healed, turned and ran back to Jesus, shouting, praise to God. Um, his, he, he procrastinated himself, procrastinated himself, face forward, I'm sorry, prostrated himself, face forward, um, at Jesus' feet, thank you, thank you. Now the fellow happened to be not a Jew, but a Samaritan. And not only that, from what I understand more in the story was God blessed him more. Mm -hmm. God blessed him more. But we have to be quick to say thank you. And not only thank you when it goes our favor. Mm -hmm. You know, thank you for the solicited blessings thank mm -hmm. you for just it sounds almost rudimentary but like thank you for the gift i opened my eyes today yeah you know and even stopping to just look around your space where you're at right now sister friends of course if you're safe like just look around if you're mm -hmm. in your house listening if you're with people whatever just look around i bet you you can spot the things around you that were that used to be prayers yeah like you are sitting in a space of answered prayers Thank him for that. Because mm -hmm. at one time, you didn't know what was going to be available or accessible to you in that area. No. 
whether it's a car, whether it's gr- whatever it is, there's nothing too big or too small. But I bet you if you just looked around, you could say, wow, I'm literally sitting in the overflow of his goodness of those answered prayers. Yeah, man. Thank you, God. And I want to hear him. Let's hear him. What is one thing that you can thank God for that you know is an answer to a prayer if you look around, Candace? Why you're looking? Because you put that out there. It just made me think of something. It was when I, you know, had gone without work for a while and, and God placed me in, in different homes. And it literally was different homes of his, him doing, not me, because I didn't even ask anybody. They told me, you know, it was such a blessing. Both It wasn't about me, I'll say that, because mm-hmm. I lived with this couple that had been my friend for years and they invited us in and clean up a space and we stayed there and and you know you think everything's about you it wasn't about me I stayed there and it was a blessing and I'm so thankful and then I was literally um, uh, praying and the next family was like this season at this home with these people God was closing the door and I knew it and so this couple comes up and asked me I heard that you need a place I don't know how But we were praying because we go out of town. Will you stay at our home? Because we have a dog. I think you came out there to their place. Mm -hmm. And we stayed out there a year. And that Mm -hmm. was heaven. Heaven. Uh, We, all of us would be just so comfortable. We'd fall asleep in the house with the doors open. And it was just, you know, you could hear the coyotes, the the owl, the, in the morning was a road runner. I had no idea what it was. And that was in San Diego. And it was just, it was the Lord. And then I remember, you know, it was time to go. The season was going. They needed to sell their home. And I didn't have any money. But I had to step out in faith because God told me it was time. And I had no money. I had $100. And where I live now, they were doing a special, $99 to move in. I told her I had 100 And I went to 7-Eleven and got a money order. And it cost 75 cents, so I had 25 cents left over my bank account. And I was scared, because I really didn't even have a job to that I was going to. I was walking out in faith. Mm-hmm. And it was crazy. It was, when I tell mm-hmm. you, no money, $99 moving in, no money, no job. And it was all God, and whew, mm. I don't want to be in that place again, okay? Right. <laughs> right. I don't want to be in that place again. But share yours, Candace, if you can think of uh, one. I'm just, honestly, I'm just looking around my house, right? And and I'm kind of an, I'm a very orderly person. And right now my house is in chaos because we're cleaning, got a new mattress, all kinds of stuff. And I'm looking around going, this is the fruit of the labor that my husband and I have put to make this house a home. Mm-hmm. You know, his industry shut down during the pandemic. He drive he drives, he's in the travel industry and there was nobody traveling. So for two years he didn't work. There was no work for him. Mm-hmm. And we never missed a beat. Right. I work at a school. Hello. Like both of our industries were so vastly affected. We were never late on a single bill mm-hmm. the entire time. Not one time. I got all my medicine, like everything. It was as if it wasn't even happening in that sense. That panic of, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And all I, all we kept saying was God knew that this time was going to come. Mm-hmm. So God will make sure we have what we need. Mm-hmm. So to see my house, even though it's not as orderly as I would <laughs> like, like this is, this is what he did. He kept us. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, how can I not have faith in a God that does that? Right. I can't do it. I, there's no way. I'm not even a good mathematician. I don't even have those skill sets. I don't. Yeah. And there was no other options. Like the industry, it didn't exist for over 18 months. Right. I think How you got a I car in there have, too. Huh? I think you got your car. Right, girl got a new car in the middle of pandemic. With like with all the numbers and the whistles and the it was perfect. I could not have done it. 
could not. And so to be able to just like sit back in my chair and just swivel my head is like, man, how do you not have faith in this guy? Mm-hmm. In this guy. Mm-hmm. Not, that, not a watered down version of you of this guy. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard not to. You can't. You have to. Yeah. So I do. I challenge you, sister friends. Just if you don't do it right now, at some point, just stop and look around. And just you are living in answered prayers because of his faithfulness. Yeah. Join him in that faithfulness. Yeah. So good. So good. Oh, so good. As we end this, we, we've talked about the Hall of Faithers and we've talked about being proactive and not reactive. That's two different things. And I want to tell you this in proactive. Like Peter, Peter received faith to walk on water when he heard Jesus say, come. Where is he calling you to? Where is he asking you to step out at? Is it for a job? Is it to turn in your hours for the next? Is it to write the book? Is it to start counseling? Is it to um, start a new job? Whatever it is, that faith did not come alive until he threw his legs over the side of the boat and he started walking. Action unblocks the power that is a resident in you. Think about it, action unlocks the power that resides in your faith that is in you. I thought of this song, if you- Y'all gotta write that down, that's good. Okay, which one you want me? Action unlocks the power that resides in the faith that is in you. Because mm. listen to what that's saying. You already have it within you. Mm-hmm. He made sure of it. Just like you said, he loves you. And because his love for you is more than our brains can even comprehend, he's put the very same faithfulness that makes him God inside of you already. So when you move, you are honoring him. When you move, you show his glory. When you move, you remind others how good he is all the time. And you get to walk that out and not get to be evident of the fruit in your life. Stop it. Yeah. Yep. That's so I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Find and study the promises in the Bible that cover your need. Go. And if you can't, join us. We create scriptures every month to read through. Give yourself everything everything of the word write it on the tablet of your heart meditate on them until you get it deep inside of you spend time with god and listen to him i i if anybody don't know this about me i like songs okay i love worship songs i can make a song go with anything everything <laughs> check she out. really can it's quite a talent <laughs> check out instagram and find a song to go with it but i thought <laughs> when canon was talking look up my child is it, yeah, oh, look up my child uh-huh. by Lauren Daigle, and she says, um, she says, um, you're not threatened by war. You're not shaken by the storm. I know you're in control, even in our suffering, even when it can't be seen. I know you're in control. Look up, my child. Look up, my child. Oh, look up, my child. I hear you saying, you say, you say, Look up, my child. And that's what I want you to remember, to look up to the Lord and know that God has you every single step of the way. He's not going to let you do it alone. He doesn't. He wants you to depend on him. And, and know this right here. Here's your thing. Spending that time with God, listening to him, do what he says and make the change that he requires. Hearing his voice produces faith and obedience to do what he says produces the victory. Hearing his voice produces faith and obedience to do what he says produces the victory. Faith mm-hmm. comes by hearing and hearing by the spoken word of God. It is not going to come any other way. This is the good news. This is the gospel. This is the truth. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the spoken word of God. Your faith will grow when you listen 
to the word of God that is spoken to you. Look up, my child. Look up. Yep, that's it. it right. That, and good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. Right. Love you guys. Oh, Play. Right. Plain is this is friend. Go back to the beginning. Start over. Get your notepad out if you didn't have the first time. But no, in all seriousness, like God loves you so much. So much. Mm -hmm. Don't miss what he has for you. Please. It would be a disservice not only to him, but to you and to us. We need you to walk in when he's asked you to walk in because yeah. you got stuff that we need. Because mm -hmm. we need each other. Yeah. That's it. That's all, folks. That's Bugs Bunny, right? No. Porky, Porky Pig. That was the pig. Okay, there it is. That's all, folks. <laughs> right? The pig? Mm-hmm. Hope you enjoy this, this one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The plane is, is going into the shelter, all right? Candace it's is going to pray us out. Have a great week, sister friends. We'll see you next week right here. On a cup of soul. Cup of soul. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that you have been guiding us through this this small journey of faith over these last several weeks. Mm -hmm. And to see to see it be in action, with action, because of action, I don't know. It just unlocks it in a whole new way. To see the people in the Bible, those Hall of Faithers, the one even the ones we talked about today, to see how they moved with you. And, and their faith changed with you. They changed with you. That is the kind of faith we want in our lives. We know that trouble will come. You tell us that. We know that weapons will form. You tell us that. But you also tell us that we are more than a conqueror. You also tell us that we are refined. You also tell us that we are redeemed, we are forgiven, we are sustained, and we have been made whole. So let our faith focus on those things. Let our faith focus on the identity that you speak over us. Let our faith focus on the victory and those unsolicited blessings. So Father, we thank you for all that you are doing. We thank you for all that you are. And we are just grateful that we get to do this life, not only with you, but for with, but with each other. So sister friends, know how much God loves you. And we will see you next week. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sister friends. Next week, we're looking for some Hall of Faithers to join us on the next podcast. If you are interested in sharing your faith story, reach out to Girl Talk 2 Ministries, Girl Talk Ministries 2 at gmail.com, or leave me a message and we'll reach out to you. We'll love to hear your story and we'd love to share it so others can hear it. We'll see you next week right here on Cup of Soul. Bye bye.